Hello and welcome to the Gemini Rogues. Um, today, what we have is a top five tier five tank destroyers. That took you some gain out then. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. So it's, um, it's the number five, isn't it? So this is the number five, and we've got, um, what is it? It's, a, it's welcome to the Stug life. It's a Stug. Now tell us why it's number five. Can I say five? It's number five because it's got a fair few drawbacks. It's not the ideal tank destroyer. It's not bad, but it's number five for a reason, and we're going to look at why. Don't forget, there's several tank destroyers that haven't made yeah, it. Yeah, the top bathtub. Five. I can tell you now, the bathtub has not made the top five for the. What nation is that? S35 CA French tank destroyer tier oh, it's five. A it's one, just it? too long on the aiming. It's painful. Pain. It's like playing an artillery, but we're going down to top down view. It's that long to aim, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> I've never played it. It must be bad if it's not making yeah, top five. Yeah, um, the SU85 because it's like playing with a blindfold on. <laughs> you just can't see anything. Is that Russian? Is that the yeah, Russian the Russian SU85. It's it's blind as a bat. Yeah. It's blind got a good gun. Bat. Don't get me wrong. The gun's good on it. 144 pound 180 damage which is more than adequate it's just seeing them oh just seeing, seeing you <laughs> because normally if someone sees you it can spot you and you ain't got no armor so okay. for that reason it's a bit okay well they're not in the top five so no. that's, like, we've just brushed against them because we're concentrating on as top five tank destroyers of yeah. tier five and this one is the stug the stug was produced it's based on a panzer free tank okay bit of beefed up turret straight on no turret um, Fixed gun. Fixed gun. Um, a lot of them made. 9,346. They were made right up to the end of the war in 1945. That's a couple, isn't it, that? With reported claims of over 20,000 enemy vehicles destroyed by them. That's not bad. So it? it was an efficient machine Two to for the German not army. Bad. Um, it was still in operation in 1967, still being used. It's a six year war down in the Far East. Wow. So it had a long lifespan as well. So it did. It's versatile as well. Did well there. Um, the one we're going to use, we're, well, we're using two. two. We're using the 10.5 centimetre, 105 millimetre derp cannon. Well, I okay. don't like that gun. Yeah, it <laughs> it's like not it. the best gun for this tank, or the 75 millimetre, mm, yeah. which is better gun. Is that the top choice. gun? Is that yeah, the top, um, it's the better oh. choice, of, and we're going to tell you why and what for as we go through. So we're going to start with a replay, and I'm going to go through pros and cons. Okay. And Let's roll straight into this replay then. Uh, it's, it's on... And um, what maps? Is Overlord. It? Overlord, that's right. So you can see here straight away mobility. It's quite good. Yeah, it's nippy, isn't it? Uh, it's small, isn't it? It traverses on itself fantastic. Spins around <laughs> really quick. You're not going to flank this thing. It can just spin and face anything in a click of a finger. It's facing opposite direction. Yeah, it's quite which is quite handed by the fact that it reverses at about two mile an hour. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> it does not reverse like at all. But you can see here, this is a problem. You can get drawn into playing it as a medium tank. And, uh, and it doesn't yeah. suit it. I mean, I, I've been saying, I've not really got the best out of the Stug, I think. It's a good tank destroyer. You can see here, the gun straight away. This is the 7.5, well, 75 millimeters, you want to call it. Yeah. You can see it's accurate. Decent penetration, 150 mm penetration. 194 if you stick an APCR shell in it. Mm -hmm. And we're talking 135 damage, which is okay. That's all right. It's not brilliant, Looks but like it's not bad. Right it's kind of adequate and about mm. average for the tier five tank destroyers. We've already mentioned the 180 damage roll you get on the SU-85. The bathtub does 300, which is Ooh. high, really yeah. high, but it takes you forever to aim. You've probably got three shots off and it's stuck by the time. You can see it's fire rate, it's good. Yeah. It's pretty good. You can really unleash. I mean, you see the armor as well. Yeah. You ain't penning as well. You're bouncing you've got some a, shots. Yeah, and you can see how quick it just spins on itself and it's facing yeah. another direction and you're off. Acceleration, it's good at. Top speed, it's good at. It gets to its top speed really quick as well. Um, it's quite stealthy. You can yeah, hide in nice it very well. It struggles with its view range though. You can see on the map though, the blue arc coming off you. It's not great. <laughs> it yeah, struggles to spot targets, so it kind of relies on your team. Team dependent. To, yeah, yeah, to spot targets for you, which you could say that about any tank destroyer, to be fair. But El Cat can spot its own targets and kill them, and so can a few others at yeah. tier 5, so it struggles in that respect. See, so we're still bouncing shells. You can see that the frontal armour is more than adequate. Don't get me wrong, you don't go driving around putting your front to everything thinking you're some kind of armoured up monster that's not going to take a shell, because yeah. they will pen you. Yeah. We just angled really um, nicely there. You mentioned Hellcat's tier six, isn't it? Yeah, Hellcat's tier six, which has got a really good view range. Oh, okay. And it's stealthy as well, a bit okay. like the Stug's stealthy. 
Oh, it's crap. spinning round all over the place. You can see how tedious it is. Yeah, you could easily fall off a ridge yeah. in this thing. How have you done that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah unfortunately. So we, pretty much this video has shown all its plus points. It's manoeuvrability, it's frontal armour. Yeah, it's it, fire rate. Definitely. Yeah, it's fire rate and the accuracy of the gun. It's and it's quite camera rate. I'm quite like the gun. It's quite like the gun. It's a fully upgraded uh, Yeah, it's stub, a fully this, upgraded stub. And you can see you can switch targets quite quick. The gun arc is quite good as well, which means mm. you can keep your cam on it, up your binos. I yeah. recommend you've got to have binos or optics yeah. in a stub because it's blind. Yeah, it's, it's blind. It's on par with the S85 on that respect, but that fire eight and that little bit more frontal armour yeah. gives you a bit of leeway. Um, the negatives on tank as well, other than that, as we've mentioned, the reverse, ugh, reverse yeah. speed, it just doesn't go backwards. It's like Hitler's dream machine for Nazis is the only yeah. one way to go in <laughs> forwards. <laughs> it's an attack. Probably why it did so well at the beginning yeah. of war and not towards then. Yeah. <laughs> it's an attacking vehicle, isn't it? Yeah. It goes forward. Um, the armor's not great on the sides and the back, but what tanks do you have? Yeah. yeah. Every tank stroke can be flanked and pen yeah. from side, so yeah, it's yeah. a weakness, but there's not many. And we so can see there the AT2 ooh, shooting for his cupola on top. See if we can smack one into it. Bang, straight in his cupola. Oh, straight in. Weak spot for an AT2 there, fear if anybody doesn't know. Straight in his cupola. Cupola! <laughs> As they like to call it. <laughs> um, the other drawback we can see in our, I know it's the end of the game, we've got nine standard shells left and four HE. 36 What was you shells. doing with 36 them? shells is all this tank carries, so running out of ammo with a fire rate of it is a real yeah, possibility in possible, this tank. Actually. It seems to be a trend of German tank destroyers, to be honest with you. E25 don't carry a great deal. Marder especially, you can run out yeah, of shots definitely. in a Marder quite often. So the stuff, you can see it does its damage, yeah. it does its thing, it gets its kills. It's, um, the Stug does things good, but don't excel in everything, if, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, and we're going to look uh, at it in other, yeah. another video now, and we're going to show you other examples of Stug being a Stug, basically. Stugness. In, in mm. theory, you should kind of hang back and snipe in it, because it's a sniping tank. But you can't in sometimes. The tier 5 matches, people drive around quite quick, coming at you. And especially in a tier 7, you have got to hang back. But if not, you can push forward. Uh, we're going to look at this one now on Wide Park. Wide Park. Oh, <clears throat> um, by rights, we should sit it back here, but we're going what, to position snipe? to snipe from. We're sitting okay. back, we're going to snipe, and straight away we notice that it's captured the black bag in the middle. It's an encounter oh, match. Okay. But their all side has gone right. The whole team has got, we can see the, the reverse team. of this so tank there. Team Sometimes team. it is quicker just to spin it round and drive back forwards down where you're coming yeah, from the true. reverse. Ooh, so we notice that the whole team is over to our right hand side or their left flank. So we're just going to push and we're going to try and get to this position at the top of the railway lines in the middle and try and snipe across. You're using a positive because you're using your mobility. Yeah. This tank's got very good mobility, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. You can see here just little twitches. It's hard to control. No, it's very sensitive. <laughs> the other little twitch and you can be facing a different direction and if you're not looking where you're going like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's easy. Um, so there's still, as I said, it does things good but it never excels. Yeah. Map, Gun, map knowledge helps here. Yeah, not knowing where, where a dead going? end. I'm going down a dead end, but you'll see it. I'm just showing how quick it is to spin round. Oh yeah, definitely. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, very nice. Straight bit, round. Really. That's a positive. That's all I did it for. Yeah. <laughs> nice demonstration there. <laughs> Maneuverability. So we're plus. pushing on again here, and there's a Cromwell. I'm going a bit retarded, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's not, not the most ideal. And we can see it sometimes the gun control you a bit. We need to get that bit of wall out of the way. There we go. We can see you now. Aim for his weak spot on his turret. Bounce. Bounce. What's that there? Is that a Churchill with a soft turret? Yeah, bounce. And you can't pen it. We've got 150 mm pen with a standard shell and we're just bouncing off. We get one in. Oh, he's got one. He should be going through every time this. Bounce. He's, he's face onto us. It's not at an angle. And then they start going in and then they keep going in. Yeah, it's just yeah, what just, physics for you there. Yeah, <laughs> just, just dry some. And you can see there, just a little try and turn a little bit and tank the gun. Yeah, it's it does flip. It's really sensitive which is a good thing and a bad thing because you can see it what would you class that as then a positive or a negative it's a positive because nothing can get around you this thing just look at that yeah. you turn a corner boom, you're around it yeah. there's no messing yeah. and you can see here now the maneuverability is going to come in we're going to chase a cromwell down he's got a little bit of health left he's got a one shot for us so we're going to try and kill him before he gets out of there and we've got the speed to do it yeah definitely and even the gun accuracy to do it here we couldn't have done this without the gun lock on shoot yeah. before he goes on the ridge 
Well, this gets you into trouble. You, you end up playing it like a medium yeah. and it gets you in trouble. This is where it can pull you in where it's manoeuvrability into yeah. playing medium style tactics, especially the way you, it's basically having a turret, how quick the tank can traverse on its own. Yeah, definitely. So it can get you in trouble. But I'm too aggressive a player to play a tank destroyer by sitting at the back at my <laughs> and waiting for three or four minutes at a time just to get that one shot in. You're definitely in the mix, yeah. So we've got this Crusader, and you see how the gun damage is more than adequate here. Three shots. Yeah, the re the re I think the positive is the reload's not too bad. Gun damage is okay, and it manoeuvres well. So why is it number five? It just doesn't do enough. I mean, surely I've played all the tank destroyers at tier five, obviously. Yeah. Um, just the amount of damage you can do on a regular basis in a stub doesn't compare. I mean, that, maybe I'm not getting the best out of it, not playing it to its strengths. Yeah, well, well, just, well, but, no, it's uh, hard to say. There's other tanks in this tier that I can go out and guarantee I'm going to do more damage than if I took my stug out, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's a good tank, that's what I said, it's sense. good, it's solid, it does everything you want of it, it just doesn't do anything excellent. Is, what do you say is player dependent? I don't kind of know what play style it suits. It's... Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's a bit in, the, in between, isn't it? I mean, the Stug is one of those tanks you can be having a really good match and you can be sat at back and you can be picking your shots off and then you get spotted and you can't reverse because yeah. it's so you slow can. and you're dead because you've yeah. only got 350 hit points. That's the problem with the Stug. Yeah. From oh, yeah. having a good game, it can be over instantly. Because, yeah, it's manoeuvrable, but not backwards. So you've always got to play it <laughs> where you've got cover to hand yeah. quickly. Yeah. And even, I mean, if something like a, what well, we're going to see, a Matilda gets round you. Yeah, you finish. You're not, you're not you can't back up quicker. If you can't get out of there, and that's your true. armor's just not enough to stand up. And we can see straight away, that's another reason why it's top five. At the end of that match there, we saw the stats come up and just 12,000 damage. Uh, 12,000, I wish it were 12,000. Nice, yeah. 1,200 yeah. damage, 1,200 damage is a first class. Yeah. That tells you that. That's quite low. Yeah. yeah. To get a first class only doing 1,200 damage in a tier yeah. 5 tank destroyer, and you do 1,200 damage in some of the others, and you wouldn't even get yeah, and you played a mastery it, mark. You technically, you played it quite well, because you got, you got um, yeah. what was it, first? First, yeah. First. Um, this is just going to show you the other gun. We're on Lakeville, and we're going to show you a 10.5 centimetre, under and 5 millimetre. It was actually designed with this gun in... in uh, the first instant, like, yeah, it was not for fighting support. tanks. Yeah, <laughs> it infantry was used for open top blooming anti tank guns when men stood around it to fire an HE shell out and do maximum damage. That's what it's designed for, so you'll see why in a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, this gun, we're going to give you a quick rundown at penetration. They're at 64 pen. That's the okay. standard, it goes up to 104 for a premium HE shell, uh, okay, and so then back down better. to 53, but that does 410. Yeah. On just a normal HE round, but that's only got 53 pounds, which is not drastically inferior to 64. So you're sometimes best off packing that, but you sometimes want that to guarantee because the reload's not as quick, only 8.33 rounds a minute, which is not bad for a dirt yeah. gun. It's pretty quick, but you don't seem to get the splash damage. You're getting a tier 6 match with this tank, with this gun on. Yeah. You're doing nothing. Nothing. Well, that's tier 7. Nothing. Tier 7, tier 6, even tier 5 have bounced off at sides of Churchill's and yeah. backs of Churchill's and stuff like that. I and mean, this is what it's made for. If you can get a match with targets like that, bang. Yeah. But you can see, I'm, I know dirt guns are quite low velocity on the shell, but I've never done one quite as low as this. <laughs> it seems to take forever. It's like it's lagging. <laughs> What, to get across the map, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you nearly yeah. reload a bit time, it gets where it's going if you're shooting at a distance. Uh, this T67, yeah. nightmare tank, I need to get that out of the way. Um, yeah. It's just in our chances, I'm trying to aim low, so it just drops off of that bank and typical it fires low this time. Uh, we're chances on one more time, Tracer, so we know he's still there. Boom. Oh, very <laughs> nice. That's another tank, if you could find lightly armoured vehicles yeah. like the T67, the medium tier 3 there, then they're what you bread and butter. They're what you need to be aiming at. I know, but you never get tier 5 games it's all the time. Real, no. You do get them, but not all the time. You don't get them to progress through your stuff quickly. It's I mean, it's weird because we see the KV-2 and it's derp gun and it fires and if it doesn't even penetrate, it still gets 300, yeah. 200 damage on your splash you. damage. Yeah. You don't get that with a stug. You don't get the splash damage. We need to be firing HE to probably get that the standard HE shell. I mean, we're just trying yeah. to track this AT2 here. So it's, it's catch 22, do you risk that penetration, trying to get that penetration shot and not get the splash damage, or 
the yellow of the AT shell with even less yeah. penetration and risk getting about 20 damage yeah. or something like that. It's a gamble. You've just got to wait up and figure it out. I mean, soft targets like that, <laughs> boom. Yeah, it loves them. Gone. And even side is on, you can see it. This is side is on tier five, every tank. Bang, straight yeah. here. Uh, and it, that's another pluses. thing, it takes its engine out. You can see how slow it went back as there. I mean, we're trying to try and get that tank out of the way. We know there's another, ah, oh, there he comes, Matilda, of it, and that's it. Game we're backing up oh, about that, two mile an hour. Look at us, we're just we're dead. Yeah, you know, you should have went forward. No, 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 no. There's no we can do there. No. We went a bit balls in again. We went a bit medium tank style. Yeah, play that there. was actually medium style tank. Uh, but if we'd have stayed on bank at back, they'd have come round and killed us anyway. So kind of gives you a good example of if you get caught in your stug anywhere, open towns, whatever. Yeah, dead, aren't you? If you can't, if that front line is not working for you, sometimes it can bounce. Depends on what calibre of gun they've got against you. If you're in anything above a tier five match, if, you're dead. Yeah. 350 health. It's the support vehicle, I think. It's not. It's it's kind of getting good replays. I mean, I think I went a bit too gun go in getting these videos. <laughs> just, let's be honest, the standard tank destroyer match you just sat somewhere looking yeah <laughs> if you're true. doing proper thing yeah. that's so boring it's i think not... the stug draws you into playing yeah, like a medium was, yeah because it? it was a maneuver yeah. like i have already said the it tank acts like a, a mobile turret basically yeah. spinning around on its axis it's that quick it has got its pluses but it's also got a lot of negatives go on then let's let's sum it up quick so if i was summing it up there's not much to it really is a stug it's it, it, i'll give you four plus points and four negatives how's that go on then. That's not four bad. plus points Plus point one, the gun. It's solid. Fully upgraded gun. Yeah, fully upgraded, 7.5 something. I recommend you to use that. Don't use the dirt gun. Don't get drawn in by the 350 I damage. I've never ever used the dirt gun. I mean, gun the 7.5, it gets 13.33 rounds per minute, and that's before you put in gun rammers on yeah, and crew skills and bad. stuff like that. So yeah. it's not a bad fire rate. 150 yeah. pen for a standard shell, 194 for an APCR, and they're both doing 135 yeah. damage, which isn't. It's not bad. It's not great though, is it? Not when you're a tank destroyer. No, not in And that's your job. So the gun's solid, it's accurate. Okay. But the low ammo mm. is a very drawback. Yeah, true. The other plus point number two is its manoeuvrability. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, a mobile you turret. See, you can instantly see yeah, that. Yeah, it is a mobile right. turret, but yeah. the manoeuvrability has got one drawback: is a reverse. Yeah, it doesn't go backwards. No. Please, why don't you go backwards? No. It didn't fit a reverse gear. <laughs> 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 uh, another plus point is its camo rating. It can be a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing that they can't see it, but yeah. you can't see them either because it's no, got really poor, you need to move forward poor view help. range. Yeah. yeah. So, and if you do get spotted, it's normally game over. To be yeah. fair. Go on then. Here's um, your last one. Another plus point at the front line. We saw it in that yeah, first video. Yeah, it does bounce a bit. We're if you're bouncing looking. a fair few mm. shots there at yeah. the front. Angle it. Don't bounce. rely on it though. No. Do not rely on Take it. Take a straight on. No. No. no Side no. armors are rubbish, but if you've got to keep face on. It gives you your best oh, chance okay. of, of bouncing. Yeah, so they're the four plus points. Okay. Well, the four negatives, view range, straight away. Mm, it's, view range. it's annoying. You've got to keep binos or optics going. Um, reverse speed. Oh, yeah. And the low ammo, 36 shells, is a negative. And the side armor is just going to get penned by even tier threes if they get around you. So it's got, we're justified in saying it's number five of our, our top five. It's number five because it's solid, but it's not exceptional in anything. Yeah. No, no, that's fair. I've played it. I can't agree with you on, on all of those points. You can have solid games in it, but it's hard to have a spectacular one. Yeah, you got to push it and yeah. push it. Player dependent, map dependent. It's one of them tanks that there's other tanks in this list that I can say if you end up five on one, you could carry the game in it. I don't think you could do that on a stug. No. No. I have had occasion where I've I've saved a game in a stug, but I didn't save it, so let's forget about it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, the stug. That's the stug. Um, number four is coming next. So if you want any exclusives to our number four top five tank destroyer, you catch it on Twitter. You will find it on there we use Twitter for all our exclusives. Yeah. And if anyone likes the video, give us a like in the yeah. bottom and subscribe. Please subscribe yeah. if you enjoy the channel. Any comments are good. Yeah, see mind. if anybody can guess what's going to be number four. Oh yeah, of course. We've already ruled two out, so it's yeah, yeah, not it's too, not bad, too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. 
kind of guess. I think number one will really stick itself out there as being above the rest, but then it gets a bit tricky. So I'll see yeah, what, what you think is going to be number that's four. That's Leave thank a comment. You, thank you very much, Curzo Five, for all that useful information. And we'll catch you on the other one. Laters.